Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the ST Team Podcast, I'm Jack Manson and joining me this week, as usual, as ever, first of all, it's Mikey Birthday Boy Keating. Thanks very much mate, appreciate right. that. Phone. And also yeah, joining us this week, he's co the podcast before, it's Matty Pitcher Morris. Pitcher. 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 How many yeah. pitches did you have yesterday, Matty? Must have been a good 20. That was... He take a zero off. Oh, oh, yeah, six. Okay. Okay, listen. Okay. I had Stig, the Stormtroopers. Pitcher. On his knees. Not yeah. picture. Wait, wait. Uh, picture. Oh, picture. Two. Two, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, they sound similar. <laughs> and he's still probably slightly hungover, so we'll give him the BOD. <clears throat> I'm wondering if Matty knows what BOD means. Uh, Never uh, mind. <laughs> benefit of doubt. Anyway, how are we, gents? I know, I know I'm very well, but... I'm good. I'm, act- I'm actually I'm quite refreshed. Good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. But um, if work. <laughs> we're in <laughs> ah, so Yes, work can make a man sober up very, very quickly. <laughs> in a very horrible way. <laughs> it can. Um. Well, obviously, as per, we have a song that I play in these two mosh streams. Try and guess it each week. I've got another, another classic to play. So there's no so way I, in God's green air that I'm getting it. <laughs> We're going, Matthew. Have courage in yourself. Okay, I'm going to play that. I should come through in a minute. The fucking laugh is the Bee Gees. It's not the Bee Gees. It's, it's a tune. It's a classic tune. Put me down, stop me up, and watch me go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But um, could go straight in there. Two thousand and two. That little excerpt, Mikey's obviously already guessed. He's locked in completely. Um, <laughs> that excerpt from "Jerk It Out" by the band The Caesars. Can Matty go in, go in, or go hard? Go on. What's his guess? The Caesars, not the Caesars side. No. I go for two thousand. He's close. Yeah. He's closer. Bollocks. It's 2003. It is 2003. So it was the, thing, the amazing thing though was it was recorded in 2001. But it didn't come out until 2003. Yeah, because it was on uh, FIFA mm. 2004. <laughs> How did you get two years out? <laughs> you told you, don't jump in, Mikey. Take your time. Think about it. <laughs> All aboard the mic train. <laughs> Two. But um, we're gonna we're gonna start off the podcast with our main news being Formula One, because obviously uh, the 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 two weeks of testing have happened, eight full days. Eight of death, I think. And uh, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna go through each team in let's say cha- not championship order, but in competitive order. Well, Supercar is shit is first, and then no, we're gonna do the we're gonna talk about the big three first. And then we're going to move down into the midfield and then see where everyone else is. And then to go down to the very fucking bottom. Where, um... We're not going to get there yet. <laughs> we're not there yet. Um, let's talk about Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull first. Um, where can you start with Mercedes? Uh, but... Barcelona last year. The pole lap from Lewis Hamilton was 1 minute 22 seconds, yes? Yeah. Well... Oh, so you can tell the difference in the cars of this year. Well, yeah, because the pole lap, well, the, pr- the testing pole lap was one um, minute eighteen, 18 points. I think it's one minute eighteen point four. No, because it was three six six last three. Yeah, so that would be one eighteen point four plus three point six seconds is one twenty two. Accounting finance, <laughs> but um, <Okay. laughs> I um I'm, I'm, I've been in the first week of testing. Mercedes looked better than they actually were because they basically just knocked on knocked got the ground running with I think they did like 450 500 laps of testing I know Bottas did them in first week no first day alone I know Bottas did 70 did loads of laps on the first day of testing everyone was like fuck sake it's going to be Mercedes again and I I kept an eye on the other two big teams obviously being Ferrari and Red Bull um, when Red Bull's car was launched, everyone thought, "Okay, why is it so basic? What has Adrian Newey been, you know, doing poppers again? Has he been sniffing the glue?" 
But I've been watching the Red Bull for a bit, and although it doesn't look, I want to say, quick over a long run or quick under a short run, it, it, is, does look it, looks, it looks ahead of the, the rest of the midfield battle by, by a country mile. It also could have about a million different bits and pieces put onto it and it could challenge Mercedes and Ferrari. I am looking at the car. I've looked at the drivability of the new Renault engine that they've got in the back of the Red Bull, and it's not bad. It it looks powerful enough. It looks like it can keep up. We still don't know for sure what's gonna gonna transpire when we get to Australia because it could end up being that it's twenty kilometers an hour down in the straights. We don't know that. But Red but Renault promised that they're gonna have another two tenths of a second update in engine power come Australia, which is in two weeks' time, and then another three tenths of a second in the engine power come Barcelona which is in I want to say May that's half a second in engine power alone now let's transpire that to long runs against Ferrari during the second week of practice because they were both running about the same time Verstappen and Vettel or was it Ricardo and Vettel one of the two anyway mm. and the Red Bull was about four to five tenths of a second down on its long runs now we don't know fuel loads etc because you know what the teams are like in testing they keep everything in hand but let's say for all intents and purposes it is similar fuel levels mm -hmm. they might not be there in Australia they might be a couple of times down but come May at Barcelona they might be right back in the, in the, in the fight with Ferrari at least mm -hmm. I look at Mercedes in, in the, after the two weeks and I think they're sandbagging I think I think they are sandbagging a bit, but I do believe that I do believe that they have a slight understeer when it comes to mid to low speed corners. I was watching the final sector, Bottas on um, on a on a sub cam that they have, and he a lot a lot of noises on a few cars. They can't they don't appear to be hitting the apex this as much as they would want to. That's mainly down to setup work. It's not a big thing. But I do look at Mercedes and I think, yes, they are sandbagging. But I do think that the threat to their race win at Australia, which would be normal, might not be the case. Because Ferrari look fucking impressive. It's good to see that again. Um, I know. I Italian style. After, after last year, which was dreadful. It's like amazing. falling down stairs with nails stuck to your balls. It, 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 it was that bad. Night is dark, it's just before the dawn. Hey, it's going to be better for Ferrari. Yeah. It might be. I think it. I think it. I think they're in. I think they could potentially be quicker than Mercedes. I think they're on par, if not slightly ahead at this moment in time. It all comes down to what the upgrades will be when they get to Australia, because I guarantee the cars will be completely different again when they come to Melbourne's first practice. Mm. Ferrari though look very impressive. Kimi looked very good. Though. He looked a lot better than he has done since he's been back at Ferrari. And Vettel looks comfortable in the car. The drivetrain looks spot on. I've 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 seen no problems going through turns three, which Ferrari is the only one that I've seen so far that can actually take it pretty much flat out with confidence. I've seen Mercedes and Red Bull have a little hover, which you know it's not going to lose too much time, but it is a case of Vettel and Kimi have got confidence in the car, and they are sandbagging. That that is true. Vettel did the fastest lap of testing on the second or third day of the second week and he coasted over the line he just throttled off it when he came towards the, out of the final corner and then Kimi went quicker and he said he could go even quicker than that he's not going for lap time performance and he did a 118.4 and he made a little mistake at turn 5 on his lap so there's we don't know I mean if you take his mistake in maybe a tenth two tenths and then you, and then you take the ultimate sandbag amount of the way going to be in the 17s I think I mean maybe not when we get to Barcelona the actual race because they run on the harder compounds not on the ultra soft and the super soft but I do think Ferrari are in a good place the only issue that I have with Ferrari is they constantly tested on the medium tyre now that's not a problem if you're in F1 because if you, if you do the first week of testing on the medium compound you're going to have a solid baseline to work from because that's going to probably be the hardest tyre that they're going to use. I can't see the hard tyre being used 
if the deg is as good as Bradley says. But they almost did too much testing on the medium tire. They could have done a bit. They did a bit more on the softs in the last two days, which is good. You know, they needed to do that. But I'd I'd like to have seen a bit more. I don't need a little gripe. It's not even a problem as such. But I know Mercedes aren't perfect. No one else is. But no one, no one else is. I mean, Renault, Red Bull have had the problems with reliability, and that's down to the Renault engine more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And I think when I go on to the midfield battle, I'll talk about Renault a bit more. When it comes to who's going to be at the front at Melbourne, Ferrari, at this point in time, I'm going to go Red Bull. I don't know. I, uh, it's the first year when I've sat there and I thought, I, I, I can't put a defining winner. No. Oh. It's all about the qualifying nowadays. If the well, cars if are going to be shit at overtaking us, they say it's going to be, yeah, yeah. be qualifying to race day, and in race days, eh, it's just a very long parade lap. I don't think so. I think it'll be. What I think it'll be. Great laps of you win, though? I don't. I think. I think it'll be worse, but I, I think at the same time we'll see more mistakes. And I'd, I'd rather balance that. Bottas did complain about the wind affecting his drive as well. That's because Mercedes have historically never been able to follow cars properly. Whereas Marcus Ericsson was saying um, that it's going to make the overtaking more. He, he used the word pure. I was like, okay, but to be honest with you, the, the regs could have gone a different way, which would have made the racing better. But I am excited for the season. I do think it'll Same. be. I need it back. Yeah, we do. We do need F1 Next back week, boys. Two weeks. 25th. Oh, sure. Two weeks. Well, I'm watching it live. You get them up at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I'll be in, oh, I'll be in fucking working. So if you want to pop around to us, I'll watch it live. Yeah, fucking hell. I'll be in bed watching it. <laughs> I'll be on it until. You'll be on. The, you'll be on your radio. <laughs> um, let's also let's talk a little bit about Williams before we get to the midfield part because they were stalking through the first test. They they've been good. They've been really really good. I, I expected something from Williams. I expected them to bounce back after finishing fifth in the constructors because they stopped their car developments early. Um, they look very, they look very solid. They didn't have any problems as far. Well, technical problems as far as I were, apart from <laughs> Stroll crash. sticking it in a wall. Yeah. But he's a rookie. I'd rather him How crash. How now? Eighteen. Yeah, I'd rather him crash into a wall oh, during massive. practice and everything than in a race. Mm. I do think, I do think he's got pace. And I was looking at the the motorsport stats that they've put up to like what mileage they've done over the full of testing. Williams did the third most amount of laps, only beaten by Ferrari and Mercedes. Now, if you take the whole day that they lost from from, from Stroll's crash, you're looking instead of eight hundred laps, you're looking at about nine hundred laps for Williams in testing every eight days. Mm. I think that's a really good return. Well, considering you're going to be having that for around half the season, right? So you you sort of obviously, like you said, you've got like a baseline. The more laps you get in, the better. I think so. Yeah, I think. I think Williams are going to be the fourth team. I think they've got. I think they're not close enough to the top three, but no doubt the top three will have some issues at some point. So I reckon podiums will happen again this season for them. But I, I think they're a bit further in front of the midfield pack, which is a battle between four teams. Mm. We've got Force India in that group, Haas in that group, Renault and Toro Rosso. Now the thing with Force India is the case in point of that weird the car nose. look not the weird nose the car looks solid if if unspectacular but it does look solid I was watching Ocon who comes in after a half season at Manor and Perez who obviously the the, the legend that he is at, at, at Force India the car looks solid but the it does have its problems from what I know the car is 10 kilos overweight According to the um, according to reports, Bob Fernley, who's sort of the the lead director for Force India, said there are parts that we underestimated. And when I say parts, I mean the Mercedes gearbox engine because it was they thought it'd be shorter and lighter, and they built their car around it, and it's actually turned out to be longer and heavier than they thought. So they need to find a couple, couple of kilos there. And if they wrap the package in a bit better, 
I think they'll be okay. But for na- but they did do a load of laps. They did seven hundred eighty five, and they didn't have they didn't break down mechanically. They didn't have any issues. They just stuck to their own plan. They did fifth amount of, fifth most amount of laps. They're only fifteen behind Williams, so I don't think that's a bad run. I'm particularly impressed with Haas though, because second second year team, you'd think. Everyone always says it's always tougher being a second year team because you've got to build on from your results. And with this being brand new regulations, I was thinking Haas would be struggling a little bit, but no, their car looks. Not too dissimilar from the Ferrari in terms of the the aero and everything that they've got because they follow the similar concept. It won't be as effective because it's Haas and it's not Ferrari. They haven't got the same research and development budgets. But the car looks drivable. It has a it has a, it has a touch of understeer through high speed corners, but again, dialing in the setup, it should be fine. I think Haas could be the big surprising team the this underdog. year. I think. And and it was I think I don't know if it was Gunter Steiner or Gene Haas who said this is like if we get a chance we'll be able to nick a podium and I wouldn't put it past them mm. because they got fifth at Australia last season is sixth again in a car that arguably shouldn't have been there in the first place that their strategy calls have been really good last year and I think they've got a chance. Grosjean's still there, isn't he? Grosjean's still there, joined by you know Renault dictator bloody Kevin Magnussen. But the the problem they do have has, and I have noticed it again, and they had the same problem last year is the brakes. Grosjean keeps complaining about the brakes, and I think. You think they're using NASCAR brakes? <laughs> no, I do sit there. And I, well, NASCAR <laughs> brakes are going to be better because effectively you you've got to stop a car that's got so much power in it. So to get that to stop, you've got to have a system that's capable of yeah, being able brakes. to. Whee! He was joking. <laughs> Yeah. But I do I, I I look at Haas and I think, well, they probably wouldn't have as many bloody brake problems if Grosjean decided to break two car lamps earlier for the corner like every other bloody team was doing. But Grosjean is touchy with the brakes. He does moan about it a lot. I think though, if they go to the uh, I think they're gonna go with oh, carbide production, do the ones who do other brakes and he said he was very happy with them. I think if they can nail that down for him because Magnussen hasn't had any issues from what I've seen during testing. He's been quite happy with the car. I think they could be onto something. Mm-hmm. I think Haas could... Call, I don't I don't think they'll finish fifth. But I do think they've got a chance of getting a lot more points than they did last season. And I think they'll be competitive again throughout the year. If they can keep up the level of development that they need. Uh, Toro Rosso <laughs> being on the next team have had I'd say a below par test they've, they've had so many issues with that Renault engine and uh, other little concepts that they've tried haven't quite panned out the way that they wanted them to the chassis itself doesn't seem too bad and the aero doesn't seem so bad I just think with the lack of laps that they got done uh, I say lack they did what 584 laps I mean that's half of what Mercedes did. It's half of what they did last season. Mm. Their engines, are but it's the Renault engine. I think that's causing them the problem. I've watched the car; it doesn't seem bad, but again, it's a case of I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. the The engine is masking their issues, and I'm, I'm going to go on to Renault now because Renault actually looked like they've got a good car. I haven't seen a drive. I've I've seen Hulk, the Hulkenberg himself driving it, and I've seen Palmer, and I watched that car. And it looks very good compared to last season, which was a dog of a car. I think they're arguably in the best position to get into the top five from the rest of the midfield teams because they're a manufacturer and they've got the budget and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But they've got a good chassis. They've got a cracking top line driver in Hulkenberg. Mm. Got the stalwart British champion Jolyon Palmer in the other seat. I think the car's good, but the problem that they have, which I I alluded to earlier, was the Renault engine. Poor. It's not poor in the sense of power, because I think it's not poor in the sense of power, it's poor in the sense of reliability, because they've done the new whole revamp. And I do look at that car and I think, if you've got some laps in, because 
apparently they've been running the all Renault engine teams have been running the power lower than they should do because of the fragility of the engine. Now a bit more, bit more um, testing, etc., and I'm sure they'll be fine. But I, I think throughout the season they're going to get better, and I think they're going to get better quicker than the other teams. Hmm. Yeah. But I think they've got a good. I think they've got a good car. It's just a case of can they overhaul the engine to make it reliable, and can it, you know, propel Red Bull further up the grid? I think it can. I think they got a good car there, and I think they got a good good engine. Has the Renault? It's just a case of uh, no. Oh, is that last? We're, we're going to talk about Sauber only very briefly because were they five seconds off the pace? He didn't know. Sauber is in a case in point. I like there is the. I look at Sauber. They're running their twenty sixteen engine, which Manisha Calton born with. It will create team stability, etc., etc. I know, I know what she's getting at, but it won't be. A, it wouldn't have been a bigger problem had she had just got the twenty seventeen Ferrari engine. I do think though that they're going to struggle, and I do think they might end up pointless this year. So I think so they're. I've the time save about it. I just, I just look at. I mean, they got two. I think they got two good drivers. You know, got Pascal Bale, I know. I, I rate quite highly. And Ericsson, who's got better each season, and I, I think he could be a good driver as well. I just, I just think that car is on a chassis side, it's poor. I think they've got the weakest chassis on the whole grid, and I think that combined with the, the engine, I think we're basically going to wait until we get to about Monza or Spa maybe for some point. Like doing a doing doing a, do a manner do a manner and just try and go for the points there <laughs> maybe Austria but they they could be in trouble but I'll, I'll give him one thing they've got a reliable car 787 laps in testing mm. fourth most mileage out of everyone that's what 3,600 kilometres they did I don't think they've done I think they've done bad they just need performance and I just hope Longbow Finance who are the team that took out the uh, company that took them over uh, last season just hope they've got money to in, invest in the car because it's not a bad car it just needs some work doing to it it just needs more performance gains I don't know how they're going to do it with a crap engine because I, no, I think they're going to fall they're going to do anything with that engine their, their best chance of getting results I think is in the first three or four races just because of unreliability speaking of which <laughs> <sighs> the worst fucking season for testing already now I don't mean to do this, but I have no choice because we're going to talk about McLaren now. <laughs> <sighs> um, uh, you know, I know it's Mikey's team, and I'm not doing it to take the piss because I'm not the only one who's saying it. But fucking hell, that Honda engine is fucking atrocious. It's worse than last year, and that's saying something. They they came into testing with like big hopes, and they said we're gonna. We're gonna um, we've got a new engine layout formula. We've taken cues from Mercedes. Fair enough, can't argue with that. If, if you can't if you can't beat the best, join them. Mm-hmm. And they've got the you know they 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 think they've gained performance etc. This is before testing started. Uh, we come out of testing now, <laughs> and uh, you know McLaren have only just managed half of the kilometres that Mercedes have done in terms of testing oh god it's, uh, did you see the times compared the, to the, the times is, the times aren't actually bad with the ultra soft compared to the softs around them I'm not even I'm not even going to go into performance because they're running an engine that's so fragile that we don't even Fact know it's like no you know, no my no my it, it, it gets worse when he said vibrating, I know Matty's just mentioned it. I didn't want to say it just yet, but I'll say it because he's he's meant prompted it. the The engine apparently, according to a lot of the one of the McLaren insiders, said that the engine was shaking so badly that it's actually popped out one of the pistons. This is a bloody. This is Honda we're talking about here. Not the like biggest a mul- a multinational company. Which mean it's not the biggest company, Matt. I said it's one of the biggest That's companies. That's what he said. No, no, it's not one, one of the, one of the biggest so. companies ever. You know, I have a successful partnership with McLaren in the past, with Senna, Prost, etc. 
third year in F1, you know, first year, okay, you know, you're a year behind in development for the, okay, first year, fine. Second year, signs of improvement. Not good enough, but signs of improvement. Third year, it's like they've gone back in a time warp and it's the 60s again. It, for, a, for a team like McLaren and Honda, it's not acceptable to have an engine that, an engine at, at best, do you know what? I've I've guessed the amount of consecutive laps they did on track. The most forty. Forty. Matty gone with forty. I'm gonna go with like twenty. Twenty. No, eleven. Eleven before they had to pull it back into the pits. It's that the the the, the engine can't do it. Double DNF in Australia. Oh, I'd put a five on that if I were you two, or a oh. tenner because it'll happen. They will not make. How many laps did it? Melbourne fifty eight. No chance. Not going to happen. Lap five. <laughs> it just... Uh, and the worst thing is, you can't even... Uh, and, and McLaren is saying this, and it, it winds me up, because Eric Boulier is the biggest bullshitter in the world. He goes, well, we're, we're behind Honda all the way, and we, we're, we're still... You know, tensions are strained. It's a, no. You need to get Honda to get a fucking move on, because they're, they're going to finish last in the championship otherwise. They're going to get beat by Sauber. Imagine that getting beat by Sauber, a team that's got a Ferrari engine from twenty sixteen, barely survived last season only because of Felipe Nasr's greatest drive in history. Against McLaren, Honda. McLaren, Honda, McLaren. If you say the word McLaren, you think fast, victory, everything. British. You look at you look at Honda. You go reliable performance. Vita, fuck off. Terrible. <laughs> that's better. And you, you look at you look at everything. You, you look at the two teams. You think. That is a partnership that should be dominated. That's Formula sex War. in heaven, and it's not. It's like it's like watching a rat fall down a hill. It's not entertaining. It's just embarrassing. A rat falling down a hill. A rat falling down a hill. It, uh, you uh, might find it entertaining, uh, but you know that's. And it gets worse. How so, can it get worse from that? Testing mileage counts. My most amount of laps that anyone did it testing was Bottas. He did six hundred and twenty-eight laps. We go across the board. Ericsson did four hundred and forty-four laps. We go down to tenth in the standings. Perez, three hundred and forty-nine laps. Go down to seventeenth in the standings. Kvyat, two hundred and seventy-seven. Van Dorn did two hundred and thirty-five laps in testing. I'm gonna guess Alonso did like hundred less than hundred. Ver- you know, and Alonso was bottom doing one hundred and ninety laps. Now people might go, well, Verline only did one hundred and ninety-two laps. You know, that's that's not as good as 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 a uh, Van Dorn, it's like, yeah, but Verline missed a full fucking week of testing. Ver, uh, you know, Van Dorn and Alonso have been there both times. Yeah. Giovinazzi, who stood in for Verline, actually did as many laps as Alonso, and he only did a week. I'm sorry, I, I, I feel sorry for everyone who's a McLaren fan this year because you're, you, you know, you're gonna have to get your tin foil hats out because. That's the only way you're going to find any happiness. I, if, I tell you what, if you score points somewhere in a race this season... I, Alonso's going this season, I, I reckon. I don't, I don't even know. Unless he leaves before Melbourne. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if he did. And Jensen won't come back in a car like that. No. I just... McLaren need to give a Honda a kick up the arse. I've watched... I can't even... The worst thing is, I can't even judge the chassis because of the Honda engine. I, can't, I sit there and I go... I was watching it through turn 10, 11, 12, which is the only place you can, in, in the last sector where you can only really see what the chassis is like. Chassis doesn't look bad, but how do we know that if it's not running at full power? That might have been half power. You know it's bad when Alonso says you can run at full power at every corner of our <laughs> car, taking the piss. I, I just... Oh. Ca- Captain McLaren, I know you're listening. I feel sorry for you, bud, because you... <laughs> Oh, I, hope, I hope you've got your McLaren, old McLaren Honda stuff merch out because that's the only glory you're going to get this year. I've still got my It's hat, sad to joke about it, that's how bad it is. Mikey. Tears in your eyes. Gonna go, you're going to support Ricardo this year because that's a, it's the only thing you've got, mate. Do you know what's funny? Because. What's that F1 thing? You can, like. Is it F1? Fan GP fancy. fancy GP, yeah. Yeah. Because oh, I do too. Well, I was like, do you know what? I'll, I'll go in. Clever. So, so you've got me Red Bull, Danny. You're all good drivers oh. and stuff. 
It comes from cars, I was like, alright, and so I have like a Ferrari, a good bit of hope. Then I think I have like a Red Bull or something like that. And then it was like McLaren, 5 million. I was like, This is a game, people, where you have a budget of 75 million. I you pick like, three cars and three drivers, and they're all worth different amounts. Obviously, Mercedes being the most because they won the championship. And then Sauber being the least because they finished 10th in the championship, etc. etc. I bought idea. that and I'm looking at things right now thinking. Maybe you should switch to Sauber. <laughs> because they got more over than money. I. Isn't it sad? I, I. I can't. You know, I don't even want to joke about it. It's taken about. 17 years for them to drop them to top two of the bottom. 10 years ago, McLaren were winning Grand Prix. Five, four years ago. Actually, the last Grand Prix they won, this is how far back, and I remember the race because I watched it live, Jensen Button, 2012 Brazilian Grand Prix. That's how far back we've got to go Nine for success. Nine years when he last won the championship. The last time he finished on the podium, 2014 in Australia, with Magnussen and Button. They haven't done anything since. Um, and what, that what, 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 a fluke. what power, what engine power Mercedes. did they have? Oh, Mercedes. yeah, Mercedes, yeah, yeah. And what was it that, thing you said at the end of 2014 oh, we're moving to Honda we can't be successful without a, without a manufacturer support individual manufacturer support well I mean I hope you prove us wrong but it's not looking like that at the minute I don't know, the and I don't even think I don't even think the chassis is up to top standard I don't think it's bad but I don't think it's I just I worry for McLaren I, they're gonna, I don't want them to be to become a laughing stock but do you know what they might they really might well, well on this discussion of obviously random shocking shite what I'm actually going to do while we're on the discussion of Honda I'm actually going to check the odds the you know, odds odds for Honda, McLaren Honda for getting there so Let's have a look, see what we've got. Mikey doing some important research for us here. Uh -huh. There you go. Van Dorm is 200 to 1. Right. Fucking hell, there's some good odds. <laughs> um, for what? Actually, Alonso for the race. To one. <laughs> Wait, for, okay, is this for a race win? or? Yeah. Uh, this is for Austria. Well, they're crap odds then. <laughs> uh, Bottas is 4 to 1. Ricardo six to one, so is Verstappen. Kimi Raikkonen's eight to one. Vettel's four to one. Uh, Massa's thirty three to one. Lance Stroll is two hundred and fifty to one. Wait, well, he's got bet worse odds than bloody Van Dorn. Uh, yeah, he's all no. That's two hundred and fifty or uh, fifty to one for Paddy Power, and for Bet Victor three hundred to one. Well, no driver has ever well apart from. The great man himself, Giancarlo Baghetti, has ever won on their debut Grand Prix. I don't class, um, by the way, for people who, who were going, oh, well, that's statistically that's wrong. I don't class Giuseppe Farina and uh, Mr. Johnson, who won at the Indy 500, because Giuseppe Farina in the first ever Grand Prix was in a field of 18 debutants. That's the first race ever, so I don't class that as a debut win. And Mr. Johnson was in the Indy 500, which was only driven by Americans back in the 1950s to 1960. They're just anomalous results in my world. So Anyway, uh, we Baghetti's know the only one. 150 to 1. We, we, no, you can stop now. <laughs> but I just... Fuck it, mate. In the fact you're Kevin Magnussen and Grosjean to win at 400 to 1. Compared to... Fuck me. I'm not, Pascal, no. if Pascal were... Where I was there was it? And Marcus Ericsson, 1,000 to 1. Tell you what, if you put a tenner on Alonso to win the bookies, you've seen you coming, haven't they? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I'm trying to find something regarding. No, it's okay, yeah. we're, we're going to go off now. That's enough depressing condom news. What's next? Um, well, I'm going to go on to weird news because I can't bother going through the rest of the main news. The other, the other thing I had was 25 rites of passage of knowing you've grown up in the world. Yeah, go on, whatever. Yeah, go on. Okay. Let's boot that up. It's from, it's from the Echo, so you can tell it's legit. Yeah. Number one, when someone on TV is introduced as being from Liverpool and you just know that's not true. Yeah. Daniel Craig. 
Not Number two, the first time your mum let you go to Liverpool with your mates. Yeah. Yeah. Number three, being called a plastic or posh scouser. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Number four, the first time you try to explain to someone you meet on holiday where the weather is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every fucking time, like, yeah. Number five, the first time you can't be bothered explaining and just saying you're from Liverpool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Number six, and when you're out of the country and meet someone who knows where the will is, soulmates. Yep. <laughs> Had that <day>. yeah. um, <laughs> Number seven, ish. inevitably ending a quiet night at the pub at Birkenhead's finest establishments, <laughs> aka the cooler rooms, the beach, or the cotton club. No. No. You two, no, okay. <laughs> I'm actually going to be quite scared if you have. I haven't, but I know people who have. I wouldn't go near Birkenhead drinking. No, no. Number Mate. eight, having an intense will or the will debate when you didn't realise you had an opinion on it. <laughs> Well, it is. It's the world. The world. It's not the world. Number nine, your first journey on the night bus home from the yeah. US. <laughs> Number ten, the moment someone asks if you're going to Ver- Vegas and you instantly know they're talking about Birkenhead. Yeah. Birken Vegas. Number eleven, the time you need to point out that Daniel Craig is actually from the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is him number 12 getting halfway through the Wirral Coastal Walk and realising first the a lot further than yeah. you thought <laughs> I've done it so many times so. So. number 13 this is for the old people feeling irritation irrationally annoyed with Wirral Council slash the weather for the loss of new Brighton baths <laughs> a lot of old people always go on about that uh. Uh, number 14 <laughs> becoming hopelessly lost and confused in Liscard's one way system yeah, it is fucking ridiculous oh, no, like. <laughs> number 15 finding yourself posting an angry status on Facebook about queues in the tunnel sorted out mate as you travel <laughs> number 16 I, and I relate to this one a lot the excitement of a train trip to go to go to Liverpool for Christmas shopping with your mum and dad done yeah. it once yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first time you're allowed to go to the Wirral show and the relief on your mum's face when you came home in one piece <laughs> Oh, Wirral Show is fucking stupid. Number 18, going on a school trip to Port Sunlight and wondering why no one seemed to live there. Yeah. Yeah. Number 19, trying to Google something in New Brighton, finding answers for Brighton and starting a Google search all over again. Yeah. Number 20, becoming a golf expert just in time for the Open, coming yeah. up toy like. Uh, number 21, going for an ice cream in Parkgate once and being obliged to spend the rest of your life recommended it to other people yeah I laughed a lot the moment when <laughs> number 22 the moment when you form an opinion about the M53 the Cotter Bridge roundabout is really confusing yeah <laughs> that was yesterday <laughs> number 23 the sinking feeling is you, you see one of the bridges going up when you're on your way from D- Wallasey to Perkinhead <laughs> number 24 <laughs> Learning an obscure historical fact about Wirral and telling everyone actually Central Park in New York was based on Perkinhead Park. Yeah, it is. <laughs> everyone that, says that one you know fact. Like, I've, had, I've had so many debates with Yanks online and that. It's like, oh, Central Park. No one ever. I, I, like, I think it jumped up once. like, whoa. I'm going to come Hold on there, son. Hold on, son. So get your Wikipedia out and double check it. Fucking debate with this Wikipedia, show. Wikipedia, the credible source. Oh, indeed, yeah. <laughs> and number 25. That any cunt can change. <laughs> number 25, a lot of people do this. I know us three don't, but finding the Wirral location filter on Snapchat and using it at every opportunity. How no. the fuck do you use it? I don't know. I don't. I always use Snapchat when I'm drunk, but I generally don't understand how to use it. But how do you use Snapchat? No, like, I know how to use it, but I do like... If, you, if you're stuff. talking to a woman, you take a 10-second picture of your cock and send it to her. If you're a woman, you take a 10-second picture of you having a fucking stupid duck face. And that I hate it. those duck faces. Or the stupid dog filter. Uh, okay, that's all right. Yeah. Um, news story here and weird news for Matty. Okay. Because we're on to weird news. How much do you like rubber ducks? I like rubber ducks. I know you like rubber ducks. Well, the world's largest rubber duck is coming to Toronto this summer. Well, I'm not in Toronto, Well, so. you need to go, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> the world's largest rubber duck will be part of a tour that's happening. The tour will have the duck travelling to six ports throughout Ontario this summer to celebrate Canada's 150th anniversary. It's 61 foot tall mm. and will be floating during the weekend of the 1st to the 3rd of July. Get over there. I want to go. Oh, fucking hell <laughs> no but the world's I, I, how do you have a rubber duck that's 61 foot tall 
But think about it. They can make a fucking robot through their air from Liverpool. It wasn't for Liverpool, was it? It was. No, it was. It was. It was actually Liverpool. meant for. I thought they'd done the giants elsewhere before they came to Liverpool. No, no, they they test it in Liverpool. Oh, they test it in Liverpool. They okay. did it again. But to get what they had to do is you know the ton of um, the Queen's way is. Yeah. When they had to move it from one side to the other, because he stored it over here because he couldn't find anywhere to store it there. And then to get it over, you have to shut all the tunnels at night. And have all the parts brought through individually, and assemble them in the more uh, at night, and then still hide it in Liverpool. Oh. How the fuck you managed to hide a big ass robot in the middle of Liverpool? Well, one wasn't it? It was like four of them, wasn't it? That that's what I'm saying. It was the the, I, get, the the old man, the girl, the, girl, and the dog, the dog, and then I care well. There, there might be. Another. I'm <laughs> gonna I'm gonna keep I'm gonna move it on to more. I, whoa, 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 hold on. Thank you, little doggy face. Oh, moving on. Yeah, moving on. Oh, come on. Um, Look at that. Now, this is other weird news, and it's not to do with the... Uh, ugh, I'll read it out. A few days before Christmas... Now, I remember reading this news story a while back. Not on the podcast, though. Uh, s- something caused a, a firework to go off at the San Pablito Pyrotechnics Market on the northern outskirts of Mexico City. Within seconds, the blast had unleashed a powerful chain reaction, which killed dozens and tons and tons of people were injured. Plus, the market itself was reduced to a scorched ruin. It wasn't really covered in news over here, but I did read it at the time. Two and a half months later, Tultepec is again going to have explosions because they're having the National Pyrotechnics Fair, which culminates in a display of musical musical pyrotechnics and mass release of sky lanterns now this is the thing where it gets weird and like, you know you know when you defend someone but you don't realise you've done it okay. officials are describing it the officials at the night are describing it as both a tribute to the 42 victims of this disaster and way of keeping the local economy afloat they've also invited the members of families of those that were killed as guests I think the last thing that the guests of the dead that were killed by a fireworks thing would want to be done is being invited to a fireworks display. Can you imagine that? I've just buried his son and whatever. Play through the door or phone call. Oh, yeah, uh, we know you just buried your kid and that, but uh, do you fancy you getting an invite to uh, Mark 2 of the fireworks show? You fucking what? <laughs> Beep. Apparently there's a quote further down the San Pablito fireworks market which once once boasted it was the safest in Latin America has exploded on three occasions over the last 12 years the what exploded fireworks market oh. wow unlucky. I do I do genuinely think that someone somewhere has had good intentions and then not realised why it's a bad thing to do it's a bit worrying, isn't it? And that's from Mexico. Mm. I've got more weird news. Got got some more strange ones. This one's a bit nutty, but it's friggin' hilarious at the same time. Why are you laughing? I, I told you, you always to get off your phone. No, because it's all kind of new story at all. Okay. Uh, now, there's a, a, a man called Stephen Gutierrez was uh, is a defence lawyer in Miami and he was defending his what's it called client client thank you because apparently his client's car had spontaneously combusted and wasn't intentionally set on fire now this is the the court case now apparently what had happened with this this guy was that he'd been blamed for his setting a car on fire which had caused damage and stuff to the area around it not not bad but it was quite a lot of damage and in America you can get done for prison for that now <laughs> the, the word irony is the fact that Gutierrez was making his case to the court when his pants spontaneously combusted <laughs> 
by Biker Hoonies. <laughs> now, what have I just said he was doing representing uh, his clients whose car spontaneously combusted on fire? Apparently, Gutierrez rushed out of the Miami courtroom, leaving the spectators stunned. After the jurors were ushered out, Gutierrez returned unharmed with a single pocket. His other one had been singed off. He also insisted it wasn't a staged defence demonstration gone wrong, even though apparently he was fiddling with his pocket a few moments before it went off. I do genuinely sit there and think, if he hadn't have been found fiddling with his pocket, he genuinely, genuinely might have had a case. Because <laughs> it is in Miami. And what state is Miami? Florida. Yeah, speak up. Florida. Florida. Oh, the sexual mob, Steve, you love it. We know what Florida news is like. Crocodile. Well, it's just, appa- apparently the court, the court trial is still ongoing. So uh, we'll update that again next week. I just, I do sit there and I think, he, apparently Gutierrez also blamed it was an e-cigarette that caused the problem. I was like, unless, unless I'm mistaken, you have to have some sort of fire in your pocket to begin with to cause the e-cig. Ah, so, but the e-cig um, in general. But actually, aren't, it's, aren't they it's different been, now over there compared to No, ours? they're the same, but they've been known to... Explode. Did he tell me they got fire? Yeah. Because the batteries are Someone it. up there was looking down on this goosey air as far as I thought, I'm going to fuck with your day. <laughs> now the e cigarettes explode sometimes when you use them. Ah. Well, basically, because it's an IO battery. Or lithium, yeah, lithium batteries. Some, it's one of the two, isn't it? One of the lads in work have got one. And the fucking batteries are massive. It's like. that big. Uh, for those that, that for everyone that can't see us, let's say how many inches? Two. Let's say two. Yeah. But it is massive. It, like for a bat, you, know, you don't be thinking normal double A battery, triple A, little fuckers, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? Not mm-hmm. too big. But these are like m- like ridiculously sized. I just like why do you need that that much? But obviously. It, it is ridiculous to be honest with you so I, I generally don't see the point in them but for those people who want to try and get off normal cigarettes but apparently e cigs are worse but again I don't yeah. know because I don't personally use them. if you're gonna fucking quit smoking just get nick with it <laughs> yeah the gum and stuff isn't that expensive so is an e cig probably the juice is five pound and you get like a little it's like that big Mm. I don't know. I don't. I, again, I don't use it. I don't really know anyone that does. So, I'm not well versed in the area of e-cig. Maybe you could be our e-cig responder, you know, correspondent. Oh. Over to Mikey with the latest e-cig news. I've got a new flavour out called candy. <laughs> That's it for the news on e-cigs. Bye. Right. Thanks, Mike. Over to Matty. What? Back <laughs> over to the studio. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> um. Now, one last little piece of weird news. Just need a quick go over before we get on to fuck up of the week. Um, by the way, fuck up of the week is a belter. But there's a man in Tasmania. Most men are in Tasmania, though. I'm getting down to it, Nobed. Okay. His name is Duncan Meerding. You what? Meerding. Yeah, don't laugh at his name. Anyway, he is. Um, he's actually been classed by the government as being legally blind. Um, because he's only got 5% of his vision left. Now, he actually he has a talent in the fact that he makes furniture, and apparently his furniture is really good. He makes, like, a logs and all sorts. But it's really good, apparently. Yeah. Now, he has been, like, classed as a hero because of his work with materials and how he can still cope despite having legal disability. And he's been said that he doesn't want to have the the pity or the hero mentality because he doesn't see himself like that which is you know good on him humble nice man one thing is though he's been invited to show off his work at uh, an international show yeah and then he's been invited to another like event that happens within it the thing what he's been invited to is an international light show An internet. Let me just relay that again. He's got five percent of his sight, and he's been invited to an international light 
lights show. So they're going to blind him. <laughs> Sparkly lights, which he probably won't be able to see. I do, I do wonder, has the world started to go more mental than it was previously? Yes. Because, you know, I, I watch a lot of things, I see a lot of bad news, and then I think, at least there's still stupid people. <laughs> at least there's still stupid people in the world. I mean, we've also had the world's greatest healthcare plan for 2017. That was that was from that was from the president himself. Mm. I mean, I do wonder. I do genuinely wonder. But we're gonna go on to fuck up of the week. Because Matty looks like he's dead. Oh, fucking maggot. I knew you'd crash hard. Now, this fuck up of the week happened uh, about six years ago. Yeah. I'm gonna kick you in the face. Yeah. Now, this 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 chap. This chap went on a, a date with his girlfriend at the time, and it was pretty early on in his relationship. But he'd got himself some half price coupons for the local theme park, and he decided to take his girlfriend out together. You know, nice theme park adventure. So apparently, there's a roller coaster there called Steel Venom, and he decided, the pair of them, to go on their, their first ride together. So they wait in the line and buckle themselves in when it when it shows up now here is where the fuck up begins after he pushed down his harness he had a bit too much room to wiggle around so he thought maybe he should put one more notch on to make it tight secure work so he won't fall out and die you know yeah. what i mean After, you know better safe than sorry as it turns out he was very very sorry for being safe he pushes the harness down more than one knot and the ride starts. He's enjoying the ride from the safety of his snug harness, secure in the knowledge that he won't slip out of the ride. Now, he loves roller coasters, this fella, and he's enjoying himself, having a great time, screaming a lot louder than he needs to. And then he realises pretty quickly that he's enjoying the ride too much. Oh, don't say you got hard on a fucking roller coaster. The harness, it gets worse. The harness, which was snugly attached to his body, apparently had an iron card hold of his balls and was vibrating in all the right, wrong ways. <laughs> How the right and um, right, wrong way? It's right. wrong that it should be happening, but it's right because it feels right, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's just... He starts to panic... Yeah, and fucking what if it's not natural? And, he, so. and frantically, he tries to adjust himself in any way to get his never regions away from the roller coaster turned sex toy, but it was no <laughs> use. He was trapped in the mechanical jaws of steel venom, trapped <laughs> his own proclivity to all safety, and wishing that he'd just let himself slip out of the harness instead. So at this point, the ride is almost over, and he's thinking maybe if I could just hold out. This ride doesn't have to have a happy ending. Oh, but through, the, say. through the power of sheer will, he might be able to resist. But Steel Vellum is a, is a flighty temptress. And it had other plans. Right at the end of the <laughs> Right at the end of the ride, it the ride stops on the tracks vertically and shakes the passengers violently. It's normally a fun part of the ride. But I think the point it was trying to make out is that it was trying to break or something. However, this time around it was his own undoing. The roller coaster <laughs> shook despite his best efforts. I got to know, or it says here, he got to know the roller coaster in the biblical sense. <laughs> so he gets off the ride and tells his date he needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> he assesses the damage and his shorts and underwear are what an insurance company would call a total loss. At this point, he decides to tell if he does there. At this point, he decides to tell the, the truth to his date, or whether he should make up some bullshit. So, in his, and I'm quoting here, post-coitus adult brain, he calls his dad and asks him for advice. <laughs> he tells him, "Son, that's the funniest goddamn story I've ever heard, and I'm pretty sure she'll think so too." Puts the phone down. So he tells her the story, and she laughs. And keeps laughing. I tell he tells her that if he wanted to stay, she he'll go he'll have to go and buy a new pair of bottoms from the gift shop. 
and that he'll have to wait in the bathroom so that she can pick some out. She comes back with some sweatpants that says Wild Thing in pink glitter and printed on the butt. And the rest of the day wasn't nearly as eventful. <laughs> Imagine if that happened here. Imagine if you went on Nemesis or something like that and you got strapped in and you ended up having the world's most fun ride on a roller coaster. I think a, a very, very fucking awkward led rightly just Best thing about this story is top co- top comment says, I hope you bought the photo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was crack. And when I first read that this morning, I just thought, yeah, that has to go on. <laughs> That was absolutely brilliant. I just, I don't think in our world here you wouldn't have a date anymore. <laughs> I just, I think they. No. I mean, kudos to the chick. You know, went and bought pink sweatpants with wild thing on the arse in pink glitter. Fair play to her. Have you got any stories, Mike? You said you've been um, looking at some. It's in preparation because in two weeks' time he's doing the next podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. You did moaning, so. <laughs> no, I've mentioned it in six months. Or two weeks, snap from now you are. Because <laughs> you say, oh, as you're not doing it, I'm the host, I get the big bollocks say. I was like, oh, okay. There's the big bollocks And then I finally shut up about it, and then now you just throw it on. See? Piece of quiet helps. There you go. If you don't moan, you'll do it. <laughs> okay. Two we- well, two weeks' time will be the next podcast, because I'm not doing next week. Same, I can't do it next week. But have you got news? Uh, reasonably as you've no no great You're, have you watched Taboo I'll tell you as I know no uh, <laughs> I watched the first two episodes what is it basically it's set in the 1800s you know the British Empire the sun never set oh. on a glorious British Empire yeah. oh. hundred years later uh, still up, still not seeing that sunset <laughs> yeah mate I still don't see that sunset, Mike. <laughs> Got your bolter. It's <laughs> about it, really. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, well, anyway, basically, um, they, weren't, they weren't thinking of doing a season two, were they? I don't know. I don't even know. I've never even heard of this show. It's Tom Hardy. Basically, he's actually done the whole show himself. He's funded it and everything for himself. Basically, it's set in the 1800s. And this guy is going against the East India Trading Company. Mm-hmm. And it's fucking, it's wicked. I've heard it's very interesting. Haven't you watched it yourself? I've, I've watched a li- like, little bit of it. So Matty is actually the only person who's watched. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying they're doing a season two. Plus, what I want to talk about is, like, at the minute, like, do you see all these new movies? Yeah. Um, like, most of them are being filmed in Liverpool. Well, yeah, because people have finally realised that Liverpool's got some nice places. They'll I've come to the Whittle next. Oh. Ah, they will. They have. Oh, yeah. What's that fucking... There's one they're trying to do off New York City or something like that. Based in Birkenhead. Based in Birkenhead. Well, as I said... There's some smack in going past the fall of focus. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> as, hey, as we mentioned earlier, Birkenhead Park, you know... New it's York. the model for New York Central hey, Park. Hey, someone going past with a, a Peugeot from there to play to me. Imagine that. Just fucking like 1800s. And, yeah, Stephen Chap next week, you see the silver Peugeot. <laughs> Just Nick in the middle of a Nick, you're a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? I don't know. Cut. Who the fuck's that? <laughs> Fuck you in your pug. <laughs> and I was like, fuck you, Nick Cage, get real air. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, it's like Gary News now. Oh, shit, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm guessing you want to indulge us with the life. Well, I want to go the one one talk, firstly, about the update that's come out 4.05. PlayStation. 4.50. Oh. Pew pew. I've got my own background. You can get a custom background for the new update on your PS4. Yay! I've got a 200s exploit. Rocket bunny kit. Full arc alloys. With brum brum. It's got a dog tail. 
Um, the main features in this uh, four point five again, zero then. update, drop, is that you can first things first, you can have a external USB storage device that you uh, can install your. What? What, what was he doing? Uh, he's just smart. I mean, it's clear, no. Um, and you can move all your applications from your PS4's hard drive into the external USB. It has to be a USB three point or later. Uh, 250 gig is the minimum you can have external HD. Um, minimum or max? Minimum. Maximum is 8 terabytes. Yes, you can get an 8 terabytes. I've looked into the prices. And it's very not cheap. Yes, it's very not cheap. <laughs> How much do you think? Yeah, is it? Well, let's put this let's, let's, it's say, the let's, same. Go, let's go for the 4. Let's go for the 4 terabyte or back. Matty, if you want the 4, I'm just, just think your master. It's, it's, you're looking, about, <laughs> you're looking at about 200 for an 8 terabyte. If you're a, a fucking memory stick. Yeah. A memory stick. It's a Ma- hard Marty. drive, you knob. Anyway, uh, the notifications list has been changed into a single list. Um, I, I, I don't know why they did that. It, it didn't need to be changed. I think they've... I don't know why they've done it. But how well, how well they've done it anyway. So that's a, that's a new feature you can have. If you want it. Um, when you use remote play for those that do on a PC a Mac Xperia smartphone Xperia tablet you can now use your device's microphone for voice chat in games or in parties but technically you could use this I think so I think so yeah oh sound don't need a mic then just move you past it or oh, fuck then we'll just not invite you oh. <laughs> Uh, as, as has been mentioned with the, the cheer from Mikey you can now use screenshots to customise the background of your home screen I wish you could also change the note of the, 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 uh, the UI <laughs> you know where the little menu icons are I wish you could change the designs a little bit uh, you can also post animated GIF to activities and social applications if you're that way inclined because I know a lot of people use the community stuff <laughs> Uh, your status is now visible as mobile when you sign into an application such as the PlayStation app. Even when you are away from your PS4 system, this means you are available to communicate with friends. Question for all the uh, statement for all those people who don't like to appear online, just don't install the PS app. It's shit anyway. Um, it is annoying, man. You can now make a party public or private even after the party's been created. Oh, that's good. Fine. So that's useful, a cool fine. So you go into party, party settings, party privacy, change it from that. Other features that we've got um, PS4 system you use to sign into the PlayStation Network for the first time is now automatically activated as your primary PS4 system. Uh, as a parent or guardian, none of which applies to us, but I know people who are, you can now easily create sub accounts for your children when creating your master accounts so you have control over the content that they play or want to view. So that's good for parents. You can now upload or download saved data right from the home screen, press the option button and then select upload download saved data. I think it was a bit more complicated last time, I think you have to go into the actual notifications and do it that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the option now to share screenshots on the PSN network when sharing you can also adjust the privacy settings which is you can share it with friends rather than having to share it with the whole world who sees you getting completely destroyed on Watch Dogs 2 you can also launch share factory right from the capture gallery you press options while in the capture gallery and you can select edit in the share factory which is brilliant because if like me I can't find the button for share factory because it's not on my UI anymore she was a very good point. I went through it yesterday and could not find it. I don't know. I can't find. And, 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 also, using... and also, I can't find the fucking web browser on the PS4. It's on the um, apps under the, in the library. Is it? Yep. What a crap place for it to be. It's because you haven't used it in a while. That's well. I don't. I don't use. I don't need to go online on the PlayStation. But I'm just for curiosity. It's, well, that's it's, it. Everything goes in the library if you haven't used it in a while. You can also uh, change the colour of your pl- profile screen to match the cover image. So if you've got a on your profile when you've got your cover, your cover image, you just press options, change cover image, change background colour, and that'll match up with that. Uh, when reporting inappropriate content, such as you know spam messages, which have been happening a bit more lately, you can now preview the report before you send it. So you can now read what you've said. So 
when saying you're a knobhead why are you sending me this you can then read what you've said you're a knobhead why are you sending me this and then you send it off okay double check Um, the design of the remote play for Xperia has been updated I watched someone playing uh, Horizon Zero Dawn on Xperia which was mad to watch but it was something new someone decided to have a go Uh, when you receive a party invitation you can now respond from messages or PS messages with a quick reply which is, you know, easy. Uh, let's see what else we got. Your profile screen cover image on your PS4 is now displayed in PS PS messages, which is, you know, something new. And uh, the cinematic mode image quality for those who've got VR has been improved. So they've done, they've done also for PS4 Pro people, you've got this new boost mode. Boost. Boost. Apparently you boost it and it goes boost. This just reminds me of DXD. Boost! Dragon yes. boost. 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 Um, there was a new game announced as well. Um, was it Spider-Man? It was not. Was it Batman? Because it's already been announced. It could be Batman. Oh no, wait. <gasps> Middle of Shadow of War. No. Not from, that has been announced though. You've it got announced like last week. I think you were the only one that played it, weren't you? Yep. First one was Should awesome. have brought it for news. Tom said it was shit. It was fucking shockingly shit. So what's the point of the next one? Uh, apparently, uh, <laughs> from the gameplay they've got so far, you can go from anywhere around. You go Mordor, Skilliath, Gondor, Minas Morgul, all sorts of places. I can hear your virginity emanating, Matty. Uh, oh, cheers. Not a good thing, hey, right? You, you said it, not obviously. <laughs> I didn't say fuck all. I was just talking about... My, the other rings. <laughs> uh, now, Milestone, the Italian based gaming company, those who did the previous WRC games on the PS3, and they've also did Sebastian Lowe Rally Evo, they've done most of GP games, have got a new IP. Um, the interesting thing with this is its name. It's a racing game again, because that's my Milestone's forte. We've had dirt, we've had mud. We've got a new game called Gravel. Sounds dirty. <laughs> Deserve to be thrown out of a window for that joke. <laughs> Genuinely, it is called Gravel. I'm not taking the piss. Um, gravel is like the sort of off-road racer. And it will feature dynamic time of day and weather effects across a range of open environments and tracks set around the world, including forests, snowy mountains, dunes and deserts. Racing will take place over four different types of disciplines, such as cross-country checkpoint chases, track-based sprints, jump-filled stadium events, and competitive races. Gravel will feature over 50 vehicles, with a garage representing off-road vehicles from the 70s right up until 2017. Milestone's even got the license from Porsche, so it can join the list of off-road cars. I'm assuming that would be... What's the big one? It's the Cayenne, isn't it? The big four I thought it was the Cayman. No, the no, Cayman is the like, Cayman the, is is like, like the, the cheaper 911. Yeah, basically, the Cayman is the worker man's one, effectively. Yeah. yeah. Now, I've, I've watched a bit of gameplay for this new gravel game that they've got come out. And the only reason why I've brought it up is because this is a game that, for me, is something that I probably am going to buy because the racing game market this year, we know Falls is going to come out again this year. We know GT Sports come out this year. Dirt. Dirt 4's coming out. Project, Project Cars 2's coming out. Formula 1. Formula 1's coming out. WRC 7's coming out. There's a lot of, lot of games. Most of those, including over the last 12 months, because we've had Sebastian Lowe Rally Evo came out last year. We had a set of course come out for consoles last year. We had a bunch of other games come out last year as well that were all simulation-based games. This gravel, though, is not simulation. Okay. It seems to me a very nice mix between Sega Rally, and I mean the one that came out on consoles, which is actually a very nice game to play. I really, I loved it, in fact. And Forza Horizon 3. And it's got a bit of a mix going on. I'm getting really good vibes. It's a nice arcade game. I thought, I might get that. Because it's nice to have a game that's fun, isn't it, once in a while? Yeah. You don't really, you know, I, we I were crying think... out for sim games for years. Let's have sim rally games. Let's have sim racing games. We got them, and then we went. Can we have a mix? <laughs> Can we have a couple? Just a couple of arcade, not many, but a couple. And I watched this gravel game, and I thought, I'll tell you what, the 
you know, it's running on the Unreal 4 engine, so we know it's a good place to start. And it's got a bunch of other things, you know, it's got good real world cars, like barger buggies and stuff like that as well. Mm. You know, off road trucks. I thought, I'm going to get that. I'm going to buy that game. I think, I think, you know, we need an arcade game that's fun. And I think, the, you know, graphically it looks very nice. It's not the most incredible thing in the world, but if it delivers the fun, delivers the promise, I think we could have a cracking little IP on our hands. Are we there. ever actually all three of us going to get the same game that we will and play instead of FIFA? FIFA's just too basis. good. Project Cars. Except not on a regular basis. Formula One. Except for Formula One. So on a regular basis, not even on a regular basis. No, but do you know what I mean? Like, because I think we we don't really do much as a squad anymore. We don't. But the well, the thing is, Destiny has burnt out now, and has it's, it? a, it's a case of no. It has for us, the three of us. Yeah, let's, it is, let's it is, be is, fair. Des, like Destiny's burnt out. You don't like Division because you're shit at it. Yeah, but you like but you, you like Wildlands. You fucking love it, but. You deserve that because honestly, Wildlands is the same fucking game. I know. It is boring when you're playing by yourself, though. What? That's the issue. But it's no! just... how do you like Wildlands instead of the Division? It's the same. It's bigger. It's more fun. You can you can drive on Wildlands. You can't drive on the Division. Yeah, because Division's based in Manhattan. Was Wildlands is in Bolivia. The Bolivia's a very big place. Exactly, and it's a very big fucking map in Wildlands. You, you can fly helicopters, you, you can jump out of helicopters, you, you can parachute down. Your gaming choices sometimes. You can actually do stealth. Wow. You can do stealth on Division? No, you fucking can't. <laughs> he can't. <laughs> no, no, but are we, like, this like, is probably. a true discussion, and I think we need to have of are we ever going to get other game like GTA where even I'm tired of GTA that's why I don't play it that much uh, the amount of money we've put into GTA is a bit unreal I know that can't like yeah, no. you put we've put, put in like 20 quid each that's this year alone yeah I've not never I've never put any money into it this year I've never I've never put any money into GTA not once okay I know the pair of you have <laughs> which is fair enough oh, oh, we do spend a couple of hours every couple of nights bombing it out did you, say, did, you, did you say bombing it out or bombing it out because it might come bombing it out because it might sound a bit a bit strange over I just want to rectify my ass going one way one way traffic nothing goes in anything comes out right just saying don't know about him I, I, well, for my own going back to your point though if we're going to play anything like the, the best games that have been coming out I mean if you're waiting for a review of Horizon Zero Dawn you will get one from me next time we do a podcast because I've not finished it yet so it's not fair to review it before I've finished it but Mass Effect Andromeda is coming out not but it's, get it. it's mainly yeah. single player based there is a multiplayer which looks very very good but El Chapo here is in his situation so that won't happen what do you mean? I want to pre-order it pay for it good lad so that'll be that'll be one thing, but I guarantee it won't be as much as FIFA. We will play the multiplayer though. Mate, I f- we hate FIFA so much, but we're good as a team in town. Ah, good. good to, it, to I can so- think of another. I can think of another um, word ending with the letter D, beginning with B, and has an A in the middle of it. Bollocks. And if you, bang, shut up. <laughs> I think there's. There are games out there that are brilliant to play, and a lot of them are single player based yeah. games. The other ones that come out that are multiplayer, there's something wrong with the multiplayer all the time. I think Battlefield, we don't all go on. No, we don't all go on Battlefield. Card, we don't all go on. We don't buy card. Um, I didn't buy it, I got it bought for me for Christmas. But, like, could Gravel be, be fair, one? The Witch is the one we've all been on, which we but it's single to. player. Yeah. Yeah. Is the one game that could be multiplayer based that could work? Gravel could be an answer. Mm. 
See, this is one of that. How can you? How can you say that? And then as soon as I say, give a, give a suggestion, and you're like, more racing games, mm. more racing. What's games. wrong with racing games? Go on, tell me what's wrong with racing Let's games. Be fair, out of the three of us, I've got the most fucking economic like thing into racing what game. The hell are what are you on? A like, contribution. What, what are you on? What the fuck you on about? Because I've got the wheel on that. It cost me 160 quid for the wheel. Oh, yeah, okay. Couldn't you have just said you're the only one who's got the full racing rig? Wouldn't that have been a bit easier to have said? No, because I don't. Brain don't work. Borrow not for dead. not found. <laughs> Fucking hell, that's not the only thing that's not found. It. Jesus Christ. But the, I do think that that it, there will be a game at some point that will come out. I think. I think we all know for a fact that Project Cars 2 is probably going to take up about a million years of our time when it inevitably comes out. Yeah. We're looking at other racing games. Drive coming. Club with your... I think Dirt game. 4 could be another one. With the Your Stage thing that's coming up. Oh, that, that'll be end, endless hours. Oh, Assassin's Creed Unity, we used to play that. No, we played it three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the You third. couldn't connect. He'd be spazzed everywhere and, yeah, and you could still not complete the mission. And for some reason, my guy just decided to jump through windows with not even catch the window ledge and fall to me death. Pretty much. Oh, uh, what again, was yeah. you want? The crew. You couldn't connect. Or no, I couldn't connect. You couldn't connect at all, no. Uh, what else was the division? Yeah, you Need for out. Speed, I hated with the fucking. No, Need for passion. Speed, I fucking had you everywhere. That's how you had that proper done up car. I just teared up with it. So called stock Evo, I'm betting you to a crisp. Yeah, right, there's a game. And you're like, oh, sorry. I'm well, sick. there is another Need for Speed coming. Ah, I, 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 I probably will. Can I put a spoiler on a Ferrari? No! <laughs> Can I do, do you like that glass? Mm-hmm. I do, I do think, though, there is another game on PSN. Free at the moment. Do you know what? We haven't played Rocket League in ages, the three of us. I was just about to get onto that. There is another game that's on PSN at the moment called Disc Jam. And Disc Jam, from what I've been told. I may play that a lot. What I've been told, <sighs> and I haven't downloaded it yet, but I am going to at some point, is that it's like a Rocket League, but even more indie than Rocket League was. Apparently, it's very, very good and very, very fun to play. There are connection issues, obviously, as such, but with it being an indie game, I'm not surprised. But I think it could be another PSN platform for them to build upon. I, it, I don't know whether it'll be as big as Rocket League. It probably won't be, but I still think it'll be big. It is allegedly gonna. It is allegedly a very good game to play. There are other stuff as well that I think that I could. Don't, don't forget, we've got E3 in three months. I know someone that's going. Yeah, because so because they've been because the uh, tickets have been sold to the yeah. public for the first time. I do think E three will reveal some more games. It will reveal what the Scorpio is because it would be in the fucking. He's got the games call as well, so we should be able to get a bit of a exterior knowledge of a uh, friendly face. Exterior knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Not just Couldn't you just say more knowledge on the fucking thing? Joe you know Matthew, I'm trying to stop trying to be smart. It's not working. I'm not. I don't. I'm not going to deliver that in the same way. I'm going to say, shut up. Don't right. use that word. You know what, I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> just, shut up. just do what I do. No, no, no. shut up. No, if you no, if you do what he does, do 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 that would be you, Matty. But <laughs> I think E3 this year is a case of. What, what more games has the PlayStation got and what will it bring to the table? Spider-Man. And fuck off. And what... No will... one wants a Spider-Man, mate. I'm sorry. Nobody oh, wants it. Like, generally... You're being mean. <laughs> what do you mean? It's like every Spider-Man game, it gets worse. It's like Superman films. I'm, like That was the thing. Everyone that did it, it got worse. Until the current Superman. That's why when it first came out, everyone was like, oh, it's just going to be the same, it's going to be shit, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. He did see the Batman first Superman movie, right? 
You remember, don't you? Yes, Where, I remember Batman vs Superman. No, I'm talking about um, the Superman for this single Superman Man of Steel. film. Man of Steel. Yeah, do say that. Oh, it's gonna be shit and everything. And it was. was. Three... Uh, it wasn't that great. Oh, what's that? What's that? A Marvel fan say it was not a great film. Superman's DC, mate. I know. That's what I'm saying. Typical. Typical. Shut the fuck up. Because I'm Batman. And on that note, it's the end of the podcast. If you want to follow Mikey Heaton on Twitter and his unbiased DC views, it's... Hey, my unbiased DC views are like your unbiased everything fucking else views. So we'll leave that there, shall we? Yeah, it's Mikey Heaton next day. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's JackCM53, nonce. You can also follow... Uh, nonce is a person that touches children. Jack, I do not do this. I knew you did that with the kids in the park, Mikey. I just I knew it. I don't do that. You I am also not follow Martin Morris in his street and grease me. Yeah, I want to fucking... You can also you like, follow, subscribe, etc. You don't have to do any of that. If you're listening, it's probably enough. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to complain. Neither am I. I will good for you you can like us on Facebook if you, you want to do to. that but again you don't have to complain it's oh, sure. shut up <laughs> it's, it's, bye, it's bye from shut up ah, bye 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 from